to Inside the Box, where I adventure into digital logic and hardware design. Today our adventure will be to generate a VGA signal at the VGA port of a Digilent Zybo FPGA trainer board. Today's adventure is a simple design to generate a signal at the VGA port. Now it really is an adventure since the Zybo tutorials do not directly include a tutorial for making this port work. Since this is our first project, it will be very basic. We are only going to generate a single resolution display and the pattern to display will be generated by the same design generating the signal. Normally we would want our logic to generate the display out of some sort of frame buffer whose contents would be placed there by code running on the processing system part of the board. We'd also want to support multiple resolutions. However, in practice, support for multiple resolutions on the VGA port is much more complicated than it should be. I'll elaborate more on this in a moment. To send a signal over VGA, our programmable logic needs to generate five signals at the VGA port. We have analog blue, red, and green levels, which will be varied over time to change the color on the screen. On the Zybo board, we do not have a particularly high number of colors, only 5 bits each for red and blue and 6 bits for green. Though this will be fine for this project, it should be noted that this limitation is hard-coded right on the board as a resistor ladder, wired directly to the analog VGA signals, thus there is no way to override it. In addition to the analog signals, we then use two sync pulses, the horizontal and vertical sync. VGA was designed in the days of cathode ray tube monitors, where an electron beam was directed in a sweeping pattern by magnets to draw the display top to bottom and left to right. When we assert the vertical sync, we instruct the beam to return to the top to start a new frame. When we assert the horizontal sync, we instruct the beam to return to the left to start a new line. We must assert each signal long enough that the beam, in an old school monitor, has enough time to retrace its position. More on that in a moment. Before we start the line, after the end, and similarly before the top line and after the bottom line, we also have dead zones, or porches, where it is not a good idea to generate pixel color, and we never want color output during the sync pulses. We call the left and top porches back porches, and looking at each axis separately, the beam is at those regions first. The bottom and right porches are front porches, and similarly, in each axis, the beam will be in those regions last. Back porches are back on the convention that behind should mean where the beam was the farthest back in the sequence. Front means where the beam was most recently or forward in the sequence. So the general pattern for an axis is as follows. We assert the sync pulse for the sync duration. We wait on the back porch. We generate our color during the visible portion. We wait on the front porch. And we repeat the sequence for subsequent lines horizontally or subsequent frames vertically. Now the tricky part, timing. This is the area where VGA gets more complicated than it really needs to be as there are no nice calculations that will yield the proper timings given a resolution and target refresh rate. It is frequently mentioned that the standard in VGA is that there is no standard. I'm certain it is the signal timing they refer to, but there is also a sync pulse issue, which I'll get to in a moment. For my project, I chose 800 by 600 resolution at a refresh of 60 Hz. We need to know the time for a pixel, front and back porches, and how long to assert the sync pulses. We will have two sets of data, one for horizontal timing, the other for vertical timing. I now access www.tinyvga.com and look up 800 by 600 at 60 Hz. It tells us we have a line to line of 37.878787 repeating kilohertz and a pixel rate of 40 megahertz. Remember I said there was an issue with sync pulses. Well, here we go. On this mode, we send sync pulses active high. On other modes, there might be one active high, the other low, 
or vice versa, and other modes still, both will be active low. Hence what I said about needing a lookup table for resolutions, and that this is all more difficult than it really should be. The other important data are the porch and sink pulse timings. It tells us, for horizontal we want a sync pulse of 128 pixels, active high, a back porch of 88 pixels, and a front porch of 40 pixels. For vertical, we want a sync pulse of four lines, active high, a back porch of 23 lines, and a front porch of one line. First, it should be noted that horizontally, the currency of time is in pixels, which actually makes things easy for our logic. What we want is an accumulating divider to give us as close to ideal a 40 megahertz signal as possible. I went for an accumulating divider because an integer divider will go off kilt since a 40 megahertz rate does not evenly divide the 125 megahertz Zybel clock. The quirk here is we need an on off duty cycle pair so we either need to double the rate we divide to 40 to 80 or have the reference 125 to 62 and a half. For this project I chose the latter. We want integers so I count the accumulator in kilohertz. 62 and a half megahertz is 62,500 kilohertz and 40 megahertz is 40,000 kilohertz. My divider works as follows. Initializing the accumulator to zero. This will happen at the beginning of the power on circuit. Initialize a pixel clock to logic low. On the rising edge of the Zybel clock, we add 40,000 to the accumulator. Whenever it exceeds 62,500, we subtract 40,000 from the accumulator, then invert the pixel clock. All our other logic will be using the pixel clock. One side note here is that in Vivado, be sure to copy the board constraints file for the Zybo into the project's constraint sources and uncomment the system clock and VGA signal lines. Another point to note, as I know there'll be a comment or two about it, is that we should not really be generating clock signals in logic on FPGA-based designs. The routing heuristics end up making our pixel clock signal propagate with inconsistent delay to the multiple targets, and thus the penalty here will be very clock skew, meaning the clock doesn't arrive to its connected targets all at the same time. I think the duty cycle skew from the accumulating divider will be more significant than from the logic propagation of the pixel clock. The more robust method for creating a clock is to program one of the clock manager tiles. I tried using a clock I had added via the block design using the clock wizard IP block, but Vivado's reluctance to acknowledge the clock's output when I tried to use it in my VHDL code tells me I need to do more research, meaning it's a subject for a future video, and either way, more complicated than I wish for what is intended to be a simple starter adventure. We will go deeper into the box, but not all in one video. Onto those counters I just mentioned. We'll activate our counter block on the rising edges of the pixel clock. First, we'll increment the horizontal counter. When it reaches its maximum, which is our sync of 128 plus both porches of 80 and 40 plus our 800 pixels for a total of 1056, we'll reset it to zero and advance the vertical counter. When the vertical counter reaches maximum, which is our sync of 4, plus both portions of 23 and 1, and 600 pixels for a total of 628, it'll just reset back to 0. Each sync block just compares the appropriate counter to the sync duration, and since everything is pixel aligned, we'll evaluate each sync line every pixel clock. Finally, I make a pattern generation block to generate some visually discernible monitor output. You can go creative here. It doesn't really matter as long as it's consistent and doesn't cause syntax errors in the compiler. For the most part, everything works, though I get a small glitch to create a faint vertical line every third of the display or so. I suspect my jittery accumulator clock may have something to do with this. 
it's not really easy to see on this grainy camera I have when pointing it at my LED flash screen. The camera won't cooperate with the CRT image at all. At some point, I hope to have something that can capture the VGA signal directly. I hope you've enjoyed this venture and more will be to come. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this adventure informative. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you next time.